We'll get to David real quick, and then I want to get to a recap of the Todd Warner situation. Just, uh, you know, it's really simply, if you're a poli- it's simple. Regardless of your political stripe, if you're a politician, just don't lie. More on that in a moment. David's in Lewisburg. David, thank you for your call. Wanted to get to you on school choice. How are you? Pretty good. I do live in Marshall County, and I just wanted to respond to the lady that called that said she was polling people in Lewisburg and had only found two people that said they were against it. She hadn't been to my place. (laughs) I don't know where she's polling or who's paying her to do that or where she's coming from, but Representative Warner listens to the voters that attend the meetings within the 92nd district that, that he faithfully attends. I personally potentially stand to gain $28,000 from the private school intrusion subsidy that's being proposed. But I've asked Representative Warner to maintain his constitutionally conservative stand on this issue. And let me say this, all this Republican establishment, swamp pack money and organizations, they're now just showing their true colors by attacking a man whom just a few months ago they were praising and holding up as one of the most conservative lawmakers in the state. All over one vote of conscience. It's temp- typical swamp politics that the Republican leadership is engaging in. You either bow to our will or we'll kill you, we'll primary you, we'll run money against you. And that's what they're doing to a good man who's taken a vote of conscience. And they're saying he's standing in the way of it. He was a one no vote on a s- subcommittee that voted six to two to pass the bill on. He was one of the two no votes. So how did he block it? How did he hold it up? He just voted his conscience, and now they're trying to kill him. Typical swamp politics. That's what we have in Tennessee, a supermajority of establishment swamp politicians in leadership. David, um, thank you for calling. Thank you for presenting a a robust defense of Todd Warner's position on the issue. Uh, So how is this supposed to work then? Meaning, if there are citizens in Marshall County that are of a like mind, like yourself, that want to support Todd Warner, that's great. If there are similar individuals that get together and want to push back and perhaps run someone against him, and that's what America's all about, right? Sure. Not okay. saying they couldn't or shouldn't do it, but I'm saying they're smearing him and trying to... Who's, the, who's, who's, Joe smear, Biden, who's, who's he, he smearing Joe him? Joe Biden against... Well, it's the, uh, the was it America? The prosperity was it Americans for prosperity. I'm how how did they? How did they? Now. How did they smear him? They're mailing out mailers and sending me text messages saying that Todd Warner is standing with Joe Biden against school choice, and he's the de- he was with the Democrats, and they're they're smearing a man that uh, just a few months ago they were saying was I one mean, of the top five conservative lawmakers in the state. Well, I'm not here to defend AFP. They can defend themselves. That's not what I'm all about. Um, but I mean, if they're saying that he and Joe Biden agree that they are against school choice, then that's true. And I and just to classify just just as school choice, that's a broad brush to say he's a, he's against school choice. Oh. I don't think Todd Warner's against true school choice. He's against the government putting money in to the private school environment where the government can gain control. And gain, and well, the gain, government, uh, the government already, the government already regulates private schools. Right. Well, I mean, they do. Good. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not saying they should do it more. I, look, you're talking, David. You're talking to somebody that I, I question whether we should have public schools at all. Oh, I do as well. I do as well. I'm with you on that. Right. So if I and I don't have any kids, so I want to see some of my money coming back to me because I don't see where I'm getting any benefit out of public schools. Right. Public schools are and failing. Public schools are failing our kids. What I would like to see is something that gives parents a better ability to make certain choices for their children without a financial inability to do so. In other words, they're paying a lot of their money into our tax base. They're paying a lot of their money in sales taxes, a lot of their money in property taxes and other taxes that the government places on them. And they're not getting a lot of return in their public education system. And they don't have an, many of these parents don't have the ability. So if, if we're just going to say, well, too bad for them. Okay. That's fine. I mean, I, I, I guess we could say that, or perhaps we could try to get the money back to the kid through the parent and give the parent a better ability to find better educational opportunities for their children. And I guess that's it. And look, I don't begrudge you your position on the issue. That's the debate that we're having is, whether or not we want to give parents more ability 
without regard for the financial inability to pay to get their kids in a better schooling situation. I'm not against it in principle. It's just the way that this is set up. We need to go back to the drawing board on it. What what if what, specific, what specifically go, do you disagree with? I mean, I mean, I'm genuinely curious. I'm not trying to you know paint you into a corner. I just I'm 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 genuinely curious. What about this legislation bothers you? It it bothers me that if any school, private school, wants to participate in it, or a homeschooler wants to participate in it, that it's going to come with a additional government required. For example, if I want to send my children to my private Christian school at my conservative church that I go to. Uh, then, and if I want to accept that money or my school wants to accept that money, then, then the state will have say so over what curriculum they teach. We can't teach what we believe about gender. We can't teach what we believe about evolution and creation. Well, I don't see that we in the, I don't, I've read, I don't see that in the, I don't see that in the legislation where I don't see that. I've read it. I don't see, I mean, if, if we look at what's happened in other states that have done this, that's what it eventually comes to. Do you well, tell me that it, as a libertarian, small little libertarian, that you think government money ever is going to come without strings attached? Every bit of what we do every day that what that I'm on this radio station is an effort to push back on government trying to encroach on our daily lives. That is a fact of life in American society. So, I mean, it, to, toward your point, though, David... Uh, why don't we proactively push back against the entire concept of public education, if that is true, and privatize education and use public education as merely a safety net in the same way that you, we use food stamps? Hey, I'm 100 percent on board. Well, with that, we're agreeing on that. We're not there. And that's not what this bill is proposing. This bill is is in pushing us further and deeper into government encroachment into private education. It is forcing public education into more of a free market competitive model. And I'm again, and I'm for that principle. I am. Our public schools need to be forced in, into some competition. They need to up their ante. They they need to be pulled up to where the private schools are. But I don't believe this is a way to go about it. Well, I would encourage you to read the legislation because I don't see anything beyond beyond getting some basic third party receipts on testing which the state already does for private school. I mean the the state already accredits private schools, right? There's already an accreditation process. So the argument that oh the state's going to get involved and going to continue to encroach upon the business of private schools, well, it does not further encroach in any way that it already has and it's up to us, you David, me Matt, the rest of us to make sure that that never happens. To suggest that this might cause something to happen 15 or 20 years down the road and that's why we shouldn't do it? The logic of that argument doesn't doesn't work for me, especially considering the benefit of creating that competitive environment in the public education system. And hopefully the goal is, and it might not work, but the goal is to try to infuse competition within the public education system so that these teachers, these administrators, and these schools get better at what they're doing because they're, they're failing right now I, I agree with you on that and you and i may have to just respectfully disagree no, about good. whether this is the way to no, go about good. it or not but i but i do want to go on record as saying the attacks against Rep representative warner are unfair that he's voted his conscience he's voted what he believes is the strong constitutionally conservative position he's not caved to the swamp leadership pressure or the money pressure against him he's maintained his stand and for that they're attacking him and, and, and making unfair smears against him. I know the man personally, and, I, and I've disagreed with him before, and I've told him that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not shilling for Todd Warner here, but I'm saying they, it's wrong with it. They're using Democrat tactics to attack a good man, and I think it's going to come back on him. Well, I mean, they're using political tactics. I mean, but you know what? I, the purity conservatives that I hear screaming about Governor Bill Lee all the time, they do the same thing. I mean, you know, to, I mean, I, I'll just use this as an example. Um, I know organ, the organizations that scream, I mean, and you kind of did it a little bit, David, and I'll let you do it. And that's fine. It's your position. But to, to suggest that some of the people up there that are promoting this are establishment or rhinos or not really conservatives. I mean, that, isn't that the same thing that, that you, that you claim that you hate is happening to Warner? You're doing the same thing to Bill Lee. Well, first of all, I didn't mention anything about Bill Lee. I did mention the Republican. Yeah, but we, I mean, well, I know what, I know what you meant. Come on, you know?
I know what you meant. You know what you meant. But that that's why it, that's why it's said in behind closed doors. You'll never pass a bill. Nothing you ever propose will ever get voted for. You won't get any committee assignments if you don't vote the way we want you to vote. Nah, I, I, I don't think Todd. I don't think Todd. Vote. I don't think Todd Warner has been removed from committees. Here, here's my thing. I don't begrudge Todd, War, Todd Warner his position on it. Obviously, you agree with that position, and that's good. These types of discussions between you and me, David, I think these are positive for the people of the state of Tennessee, yeah. so that they can make decisions. Yeah. Here's what I don't like, Certainly. And, and this is, and and you might not like me saying this, but I'm gonna say it. Here's what I don't like. I don't like Todd Warner lying to me. And yesterday he came on. He knows very well who recorded that recording. He knows very well how Phil Williams got it. And he sat here and just fudged and lied. And I just vote the way you need to vote. Defend your vote, and great. And I don't have anything against Todd Warner. I don't know the man personally, like you do. But don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. And that's what he did yesterday, and I don't like that. Well, I didn't hear yesterday's interview. I just heard just a few minutes ago you say that there was one, so I will go back and listen to it, so I can't speak yesterday. Well, I mean, you know, he I, I asked him about the recording of the conversation between he and Tory Venable because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't an illegally recorded conversation that was aired by Phil Williams, and he said he didn't record it, and he couldn't remember who was in the room. And it was just, you know, just listen. I mean, once again... I don't, I don't have anything against the guy, and I don't have anything against this debate. I think it's very, very important to have this debate. Uh, but there are many people in this state that are never going to be satisfied with anything that is attempted with regard to public schools, and they'll always find a reason to be against some of this. And some of these same people, David, they were for it two or three years ago. And I just don't know what Todd and others mean when they talk about school choice. They say, I'm in favor of school choice but I'm not in favor of this legislation, and I don't understand what they're talking about. I mean, the I, only I, way you think that someone can make a choice about what school their child goes to is to take $7,000 from the state and go take them to a private school? No, what I'm saying is that this is attempting to give parents who are already paying into the system through their tax dollars a few of those tax dollars back so that they have more financial flexibility to find a better educational opportunity for their children. That's what this scholarship fund is all about. Well, well, that's not that's not a truthful picture of it as well. I, like I said, I have four children in school. That would be twenty eight thousand dollars for me, Matt. I, I earn well, but I guarantee you, between all of my property taxes and all of my sales taxes, I don't spend anywhere close to twenty eight thousand dollars a year in state taxes. So I'm not just getting a little bit of my tax money back. That's sucking money from the system. That's a government subsidy and entitlement. It's classified in the bill as an entitlement that I'm getting from the state of Tennessee to educate my children. That's way more than the taxes I paid. The, the amount of money is in direct correlation with the average that the state pays for per pupil learning in the public education system, minus the federal government, because that's fake money. So right. that, that's the right. average. That, you don't, you, you, send, you, you, you send your kids, uh, David, your kids are currently in, in public school? No, my kids are currently currently homeschooled. All right. But they have also been in private school. So I have the option of doing both. Currently, well, we're choosing the homeschool. But didn't Representative Sapicki say when he was on your show that this is not taking any money out of the public school system? So it's not saying, okay, uh, public school Z XYZ, you're failing, so these students want to leave. So yep. for every student that leaves you, we're going to take seven thousand dollars out of your budget and move it over to this private school. He said, "No, the money, the money, move, the money, the money move. The the money moves, and then what he said was that the money would move in the next calendar year when the count would be. Re I mean, naturally, the count in, in in any of these districts would be reduced, and the money moves based on the number of pupils on a year to year basis. Uh, but you don't do that until the next school year. So." For example, if the count is already set and the budget's already set, let's say that one school system loses, based on the scholarship, there's 20,000 total. So, you know, let's say a school system loses 500 kids. Well, the next calendar year, if they are down 500 kids within the count, then they're going to receive less money because they're getting that allocation of money based on the number of pupils they're teaching, in part. So, I mean, okay, in, in, a, in a way, in a way, they're trying to have it both ways. And I think you're right. They're, they're trying to suggest that there's no money that is coming out of the educational system uh, because they want to blanch the Democrats argument 
that we're stealing money from public education to pay for private school. So they don't want to they don't want to deal with that. So they're they're having it a little both ways because they say, well, this is not money that's directly coming out of that system. But naturally, the system is going to be less funded when there are less children to fund in any given school systems. Does that make sense? It, it, it does, in a sense. And from what I understand, since we're required to register our homeschool children as being homeschooled in this county, from what I understand, the county receives that money from the state for our children being <clears throat> students within living within the county so from what i understand this public school system in our county gets that gets that money the benefit of that money of our children living in our county even though they're being homeschooled 100 percent at my expense david this is a great conversation i'm sad that we have to end it i've got to get to a break but let, let's continue the conversation you have um you, you have de- defended your man todd warner admirably and listen to that listen to that conversation that we had and i think you'll see what i'm talking about okay I definitely will. Thanks, David. I mean, good good call and good conversation.